Good morning, morning everyone. Everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ram. And that was Asaph Adonai on piano with that lovely tune for our Wednesday. What was that, Asaph? Where has my little dog gone? Yes. Oh, nice. Cute. Yeah. Now I recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a great show for you guys. We've got weather. We have a guest. Uh, Beth Woody is on mm -hmm. to talk about a... Um, a bike ride. Yeah, to benefit the Missoula Symphony. It's called Avando Gran Fondo. And yep. she'll tell us when, where, how much, what to do, yep. what that means. In yeah, a few so moments. stick with us and she'll tell you more about it later in the mm -hmm. show. Uh, we have Hallmark or Bullmark. We have Musical Notes with ASAP, and we have some new programming for you guys. But first, we're going to um, jump gear and just talk about some of the weather. It is uh, currently 48 degrees outside. You can expect your high to be 68 with a 40% chance of showers. Tonight, you have a 20% chance of thunderstorms and some patchy, smoky weather here and there. Um, Thursday, you have a high of 71 and a low of, of 41. But of course, by Friday and your weekend, you can expect your temperature to be into the 70s and 80s. A beautiful weekend to kick off the Roots Festival, which starts Saturday. Yeah. And of course, they'll be setting up Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. It starts Friday and Saturday. Yes. So it, it used to be Saturday, Sunday, but now this year it's Friday, Saturday. Oh. Okay. And it looks like maybe on Sunday there's just like art during the day, um, but it doesn't look like there's really any big performances. Yep. But we do have the website up, and as always on Friday, I'll let you guys know exactly the details of Roots Fest this weekend. Yep. But of course, yeah. if you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you right out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us, just check us out on MCAT.org. Yep. And uh, just a little tease, I do have some city council reports. So nice. I'm going to be talking about tourist homes. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, interesting. So it's like timeshare, <laughs> but without timeshare. Without the Without building. dealing with the timeshare and the yeah. headaches. Uh, yeah, and it's you, your home to the person. So yeah. it's like direct. So they're talking right about an update ordinance to kind of help um, control this um, very popular thing that people are doing with their homes. But uh, yes. we do have some new programming and it is the Missoula County Dems monthly meeting and this is, uh, here's a little tease and when we come back we'll have Beth Woody on. So stay with us and be right back right after this. That's what the jury heard. That's what the jury believed that's what the jury came back with now where did that information come from it didn't come from mr Wittig. mr Wittig never produced a document he produced 66 pages of campaign finance reports and in the end he produced another 33 pages of receipts no emails no communication but yet there were a lot of emails where did the emails where did the memos where did that information come from, showing Mr. Woody communicating in January of 2010 with Mr. Lefer that came from those young employees? Um, because the attorney that provided pro bono services to the commissioner office, Mr. Drusi, out of Billings, traveled to Seattle, he traveled to Rapid City, he traveled to, to Virginia, but using subpoenas and his own personal power of persuasion, he was appointed a special attorney general. He received and, and got the computer databases that those National Right to Work employees had. Hey, we're back here with Beth Woody, and she's having a uh, bike ride, Ovando Grand Fondo, and it's going to be a nice little bike ride, and it's going to help benefit the Missoula um, Symphony. Yeah. So tell us, what does Ovando Grand Fondo mean? Well, it means an endurance ride. It's Italian. And this idea came up about five years ago for the symphony to come up with a new creative idea to raise money to benefit the symphony. So they came up with a, a mountain bike ride on roads up in the Vando and Western Montana area. How long is the bike ride? Well, we have a 55 mile a loop and we have a 37 mile loop. And what we really want to do is encourage those people who haven't registered yet that you still can register and you can do the 37 mile if you haven't trained enough to do the 55 mile loop. And are prices different for each one? Nope, it's still $125 to okay. register. We do ask all the riders to raise money to support the symphony and um, part of that ride includes breakfast. Um, the breakfast is put on by the Ovando school kids, all seven of them, and their parents. Cute. So we kick off with a little breakfast in the Ovando school. And then we have lunch on the course, and then we end with a great barbecue in Ovando. Cool. And what does some of the money that gets raised help benefit? Well, it helps the symphony. It helps us put on the Karis um, Music in the Park, which was just a couple Sundays ago. Mm -hmm. We also do some youth programming in Western Montana 
and just to support the overall efforts of the Missoula Symphony so we can continue our programs and services here to the Missoula area. And how long has the Missoula Symphony been around? We've been around over 50 years That's and awesome. it's a, um, a little niche. We've got um, lots of concerts coming up this fall so we can um, also participate in those if you would, would like to do that. And then, so where can people find out more information about this? Well, the Ovando Grand Fondo has its own web page, so Grando, Grandfondo.org. You can register right on the web page. We do have some volunteer slots available, so if you don't want to ride but want to come out and um, enjoy the western Montana scenery, you can mm -hmm. still have an opportunity to do that through volunteering. Awesome. And then, so how many people did come to the Symphony Cares in the Park? Oh my gosh, there's I think about six or 7,000 people they're saying. So the Missoula Symphony is really rocking here in Missoula. So we really are excited to help raise money to benefit it. That's awesome. And then so how many shows will you guys have in the fall? I believe there's about five or six shows this, this fall and winter in Missoula. Nice. Cool. Nice. I don't know. Is anything yeah, else think, you want to yeah. Well, know? come out and ride the Grand Fonda. We promise great scenery, great weather, camaraderie, music. We have music on the course. We'll have a quartet by the symphony playing at lunch. And we promise a great end of the ride barbecue. Well, I guess I do have a couple more questions. Yeah. What time does it start? Well, you do need to be on Ovando at 8 a.m. The okay. ride starts at 8. Um, so we actually we ask you to be there at 7 a.m. Okay. And we have to be off the course between 4 and 5. Okay, and then oh. um, what is the day? What, oh, what day it is? is Saturday, September 10th. Okay, so you got to be there at 7 a.m. Race starts at 8. And then do you have like a registration the day of? Or does it all need to be pre? Pre-registration. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll have someone in the office on Friday. So you can register then. Okay. Um, so we get your friends, get your neighbors, and come out and ride the Grand Fondo. Yep. Awesome. And it's great because it's like uh, roads that are never really open for bikers Correct. as well. So yep. it's like it's, it's an ex exclusive event for people who mm -hmm. sign up early. So you guys yeah. got to sign up early. Yeah. And we thank the, the ranchers up in the Vando area who allow us on their um, roads and their private lands. Yeah. yeah. Well, what wonderful. other sponsors do you want to do you have? Well, we do have a very important sponsor. The um, Good Food Store is our primary sponsor and we have Michelob Ultra, mm -hmm. and then we have a lot of um, sponsors who support our aid stations. So um, you can check out our sponsors at the, on our webpage. Awesome, okay. and then one webpage one more time. OvandoGrandFondo.org. And then when and where one more time. September 10th, coming right up. Cool, cool. thank you very much. Thank you. Ben. We'll be right back after this, everyone. A great day for me includes a walk outside with my wife. My great day includes reading a good book. A great day for me includes the morning crossword puzzle. My great day includes playing the piano. As you grow older, Missoula Aging Services can help direct your aging journey with a new Options for Better Aging program. Give them a call at 728-7682 to find out more. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Hi, guys. Right oh, hello, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to uh, Events with Noel for our Wake Up Missoula on Wednesday. Uh, so this is what's happening in your day today. Starting at 10 a.m. over at the Missoula Public Library, we've got our open hours in our maker space. From 10 to 6, you can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use your equipment. Taekwondo is at the Children's Museum of Missoula starting at 11 o'clock. And then also at 11 is uh, Out to Lunch. This will be the last Out to Lunch to Wednesday and Thursday. Western Union Swing Band will be the band performing. They'll have free children's activities and a wide variety of local food trucks. The event is sponsored by the Missoulian and Missoula Downtown Foundation. Over at Spectrum Discovery Area, starting at 11, there are Discovery Benches, Hovercrafts, their Brain Lab is Neurons. This is open for ages, um, it's open for all ages, pretty much starting at two, two, age two and on, but they have a bit of an older crowd and then they have Science Sprouts and that's for the younger ones and that's ages two to five. At the Missoula Public Library, they will be doing resumes. It starts at 12.30. A representative from Missoula Job Services will teach the basics of how to create an effective resume. Bring all your details on education, training, and previous jobs, and you can call 
2665 to register. That starts today at 1230. Also at the Missoula Public Library, we've got a couple more things happening. They've got afternoon matinee that starts at 2 p.m. So uh, they've got a free movie in their large meeting room. And then they have middle school writers at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30. This is a writing group for grades 6 through 9 to give and get good feedback, play with words, eat some chocolate, keep out of trouble. Over at Imagination Brewing Company, there's Farmer's Market at the brewery starting at 5 o'clock. This is every Wednesday until September. They've got, uh, yeah, their Tuesday night, Wednesday night brewing cup, brew, Wednesday night Farmer's Market at the brewery. Yeah. Over at Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got Bob Ross Night that starts at 6 p.m. Uh, so you can bring your Bob, Was, Bob Ross wigs, impressions, and you can go follow along to a video and paint an awesome picture. At the Sunrise Saloon, there's dance instructions with uh, Kathy Clark. She'll dance. She'll teach you country. I do believe that it's um, like country swing and two step and all the country dance steps you could want to learn. So it's every Thursday and Wednesday night at five o'clock at seven o'clock for five dollars. And then we've got some karaoke for tonight. Over at the Eagles Lodge, Missoula, there's a karaoke contest at 8.30. There's karaoke at the Badlander at 9. There's a Milk Crate Wednesday is at the Palace at 9 o'clock. That's electronic music. And then there's karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon, also at 9 o'clock. We've got a couple bands at Stage 112. Uh, this is put on by Communion U Music and KBGA College Radio. Diarrhea Planet, as well as DJ The Captain, they'll be playing at Stage 112. Tickets are on sale now. It's $10 in advance or $12 a day up. And then my last event for your Wednesday, there's open mic at the VFW that starts at 9 o'clock. So that's what's going on in your community. Now we've got musical notes with Asaf Adonai. Summary, please. <laughs> Isn't that a great intro? <laughs> yeah. Our guest on today's musical notes was an Austrian-born American actress. She is also the creator of the Genesis device on Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Her star dimmed much too soon. She also appeared in several television shows and movies and received an Emmy Award in 1992. Born Bibiana Marie Corchette, Bibi Besh, known to the world as Dr. Carol Marcus, and there she is in character there. I don't know if you recognize her or not. She was Captain Kirk's love interest in The Wrath of Khan, too, and she created that device that Khan stole, which ended up killing Spock. So mm -hmm. you, it's, it's almost like a soap opera drama. You just have to see this particular movie here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, B.B. Besch was born in Vienna, Austria in 1942. Her mother was a theater actress, um, Gusti Huber, and she starred in German films during World War II, so she comes from an acting family during that time of history. And World War II was a horrible time for a lot of people, including this actress here. But um, she, get my notes here. She has appeared in a lot of television shows like Northern Exposure, that was probably her biggest hit, ER, Law and Order, LA Law, Night Court with Harry Anderson, Family Ties with Michael J. Fox, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman with uh, Jane Seymour, Coach Craig T. Nelson, It's Gary Shandling's Show, Murder She Wrote with Angela Lansbury, I almost said Angela Cartwright. <laughs> <laughs> and her performances during Maple Drive and Northern Exposure earned her Emmy nominations in 92 and 93. And let's catch her in action here. Now, you won't be able to hear this, but she's breaking William Shatner's heart, or Captain Kirk, I should say, Admiral Kirk in this case, because they had a child and then he goes and flies off in space and she decided she wanted to keep her son so she never told Captain Kirk that he had a son and she's breaking the news to him now as an adult so he's feeling kind of a little uncomfortable realizing he had a son that he never knew about because she wanted him in her world not chasing across the universe with her father <laughs> yeah. yikes I get that yeah <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, he's yeah not, not to mention all those maybe half green children he has. Yeah, the half yeah. three children, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, that gives you an idea of her her acting. And let me say some final things about her real quick. Um, she just, she graduated 
1959 and attended the Connecticut College for Women before graduating and moving to New York to become an actress. And the rest is history. There she is with her little lovely daughter at the time. Now, her star dimmed in 1996 at the age of 54. So she didn't necessarily live very long, but she sure left the world a lot of characters. So you can check out B.B. Besh and see her in any of her interviews or other television shows that I mentioned. God bless her, and on that note, I will stop. Thank you very much, Asaph. Sure. That was Musical Notes with Asaph Adonai. We've got an art clip. This is yep. Vermin. It's over at the Clay Studio. And you only get so many chances to check it out because it ends next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll show this again Friday and then again on Monday, and then that's it. No more. They're going to change out the Clay Studio just like that. We'll be back with events for Thursday right after this. We are back! Okay, so this is what's going on in your community on Thursday. Starting at 9 a.m., this is called the Last Best Conference. This is going to be at the Wilma. And so what it is, this, the Montana has been known the past four years in a row, we've been voted as the number one startup state in the United States, which is very funny because I guess you wouldn't really think of Montana as having a bunch of entrepreneurs, but we totally do. Yeah, I mean, it's a good place to start, but it's not a good place to stay. Well, fix it. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it all depends. Well, everyone's leaving. Every, I mean, it's a good place to start off. Who's yeah. leaving? Everybody's leaving. Like who? Like everybody. I don't know anyone. Yeah. Leaving. Yeah. A lot of people just leave. <laughs> it happens. But so, last best conference is um, what it is. It mixes main stage speakers, community meetups, music, and learning academics into one experience. So it'll be at the Wilma and it'll be all these different things talking about starting up businesses and celebrating Montana in that way. Um, and so it hopes to create community, embody creativity, and cultivate courage of other startups. So if you are thinking of starting up a business or have before or in the process or you know don't know anything about it and maybe want to, you can go here. Last Best Conference at the Wilma tomorrow at 9 a.m. We have our NAMI Missoula Weekly Meeting at 10 a.m. at the Providence Center. It's a free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI. Paddleboard lessons are at Frenchtown Pond State Park that starts at 11 a.m., 11 to 12.30, and then 1 to 2.30. Cost is only $45. You just have to bring yourself, and they provide all the equipment. At Spectrum Discovery area, their Discovery Bench is Fractals, and their Brain Lab or Eye Dissections, they open at 11. Face painting is at the Children's Museum of Missoula, that's also at 11. The Kids Table is at the Missoula Public Library, it starts at 11.30, this is a free weekly lunch, free daily lunch, Monday through Friday for ages 18 and under. 
Pop-up playground is at the Children's Museum. This is put on by the Children's Museum. They're going to be at Fort Missoula. So from 1 to 3, they bring all these different supplies, every single thing, random things, and they just make a playground out of it. So it could be like paper towel rolls or toilet paper or uh, Legos or, you know, those cardboard boxes that have all the weird holes in it and you could put different eggs in, like egg cartons. Egg carton. Egg carton. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Over at NAMI Missoula, we've got our NAMI Connection Support Group. It starts at 1.30. This is a free weekly support group for adults living with mental illness. This is located on Brook Street. The Missoula Public Library, they've got their uh, computer electronics in their makerspace. So from 3 to 6 in the makerspace, you can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. At the Missoula Butterfly House, they're talking about how strong is an exoskeleton. So from 3 until 5, they'll be taking a closer look at what makes up an exoskeleton. Lego Club is at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. This is for ages, um, I, I believe it's for all ages, but if you're 12 and under, you're going to need an adult to hang out with you. Spider feeding is at the Missoula Insectarium. Uh, it starts at 3.30. They're feeding Rosie the Chilean rose hair tarantula. You can learn about spiders hunting and eating habits and just watch her eat some bugs, which I think would be really cool. Yeah. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got Faith and Climate Action Montana meeting. It starts at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. starts at 5 p.m. Uh, it's a two-part informal book club conversation about Pope Francis's encyclical uh, Lu Luado... C. I don't think I said that right. Country Line is going to be playing at Downtown Tonight at Karis Park at 530. This is going to be the last Downtown Tonight for the summer. Um, they've got a wide variety of food vendors. They've got children's programs sponsored by First Security Bank, JCCS, and the Missoula Downtown Association. Oh, my, uh, Missoula Downtown Foundation? Missoula because it's like a, it's, it's all of them. Downtown Missoula Associ Downtown Foundation. Downtown Association works with partnership, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And Foundation is all of the mm -hmm. downtown um, programs that just kind of spread it up in the last five years. Yeah. Because there's always just, just the MDA. Mm -hmm. And then they teamed up with the Missoula Culture Council, Downtown Partnership, and now they have the foundation. That's perfect. This yeah. is, it encompasses all of them. So it's sponsored by the Missoula Downtown Although it foundation. could be kind of confusing. Like, who's my boss? Is like, you get to listen to my downtown <laughs> law. It's like, what's my, this is my downtown. Oh, this is my downtown law. It's like, who do I work for? You work for the partnership, but you get paid through the uh, cultural councils. Like, then that, why should I listen to these two guys? Because we live in the same building and we want to make everything cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's usually how the that, conversation goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this part, this uh, imagination conversation is sponsored by Scott Ramp. <laughs> 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 Over at Community Medical Center, they've got Treasure State Toastmasters starting at 6 o'clock. This is a workshop style program that helps you improve your confidence, improve your public speaking abilities, and increase your leadership skills. Over at MCT Center for the Performing Arts, there's Volunteer Night. It starts at 6 p.m. They celebrate their past, present, and future volunteers. It's open to the general public, so all are welcome. They'll play some Jeopardy. They'll uh, let everyone know about the opportunities available from the Missoula Children's Theater and the Missoula Community Theater. We've got a couple, we've got a band, Lola Peak Brewing Company. Uh, Kima and the Keepsakes will be playing there from 6 to 8. At the Good Food Store tomorrow at 6.30, they've got a roll up your sleeves, hands-on kimchi class. Cost is only $35. Cool. The Roxy Theater, they've been showing a series of Makizaya, I think it's, I Miyazaki. Don't know, Miyazaki, thank yeah, you, Scott. He's awesome. Miyazaki, they've been showing a series of his movies at the Roxy Theater all summer long. They'll be showing Howl's Moving Castle at 8 p.m. It's about an unconfident young woman who's cursed with an old body by a spiteful witch. Ooh. Her only chance of breaking the spell lies with a self-indulgent yet insecure young wizard and his companions in this in his legged walking castle. Cool. This one's really fun. These movies are all they're uh, anime and Japanese movies because he's a Japanese director. But they all have a lot of really fun like fantasy elements to it and a lot of supernatural elements. So they've been at the Roxy Theater all month long for all summer long. So yep, yeah, this one will be at eight o'clock tomorrow. It's like super environmentalist, like an anti-government, like yeah. all the way. It's always like kind of been like anti-government. The government's ruined the planet, and it's like you got to use the natural world, brah. Mm -hmm. That's Miyazaki. It's That's true. That's like the perfect example of all Miyazaki. It's all like you got. To protect nature, you gotta leave nature alone, man. It's like, oh, the government's gonna ruin everything. Like, it usually does. <laughs> He's been making these movies since the 80s, and all of the, a lot of them are very popular children's movies, and I don't oh, yeah. remember watching them when I was younger. So yeah, it's a delight to be able to see them on the screen again. 
it's a nice heartwarming story and uh, the, the one thing that breaks the curse is true love. But will she find it? Who knows? As an old woman, it's never too late. No. That's the moral of the story. It's never too late to find love. Okay. At the Sunrise Saloon, they've got Stomp the Cat Box. It starts at 8.30. That's a band. At the Crystal Theater, they've got a Big Sky film series movie. It's called I Am the Blues. It starts at 8.30. And it's a documentary that takes the audience on a musical journey through the swamps of the Louisiana Bayou. Mm -hmm. um, and so they talk to all these old uh, blues devils, many of their... many in their 80s that are still living in the America Deep South and touring the Chitlin Circuit. Uh, they talked to Let Bobby Rush, Barbara Lynn, Henry Gray, Carol Fran, Little Freddie King, Lazy Lester, Bill Bill Walker, Jimmy Duck Holmes, R.L. Boyce, Elsie Ulmer, Lil Buck Single, and their friends. <laughs> Lots of other ones. Nice. Yeah, blues names are always the best. And if I'm a blues gal myself, I love the blues. So if there are other blues lovers, I feel like this would be a really fun movie. Yeah, Except blues is Crystal a little more Theater, classy. Yeah. And like rock is always just like, oh, you got to watch out for expletive, expletive jam. <laughs> yeah, well, blues, blues was interesting because it was like blues and jazz kind of came up at the same time. But before there was really, I don't know, blues and jazz came up at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blues, folk, blues is kinda like, like the sadder version of jazz. Like no, actually, blues is a sadder version of folk music, which blues actually evolved into the jazz, which is more like less about the you know singing about your problems and more about playing about your problems. Mm. Which is why they're just like, oh, we don't need people to sing. It's like we hate singers. Let's just you have the trumpet talk for me. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what so jazz like kind of evolved from there. I watched the whole documentary about it when Marcellus is being interviewed and talking about jazz. It's really great. I took a history of jazz class one time, Scott. So I think. I would know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so open mic is at the Broadway at 9.30. And then uh, Dead Hipster at the Badlander is also at 9. And then it looks like we have got my last event for Thursday is Ancient Forest Band Residency 5 the, over at the VFW at 9.30. The VFW every month has just like a resident band where they'll play, I don't know if they play like multiple nights in a week, multiple nights in a row, or if they'll just play one night. It seems like but, they've been playing a couple weekends. Yeah, so Ancient Forest is their residency band. They'll be playing at 9.30. So as always, you guys, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent or the Missoulian for more events. I always get all of my information from MissoulaEvents.net so you can see what I talk about and more. But we're switching gears now and I know that we've got some city council. Yes, we do. So take it from here, Scott. So of course, if you want to find out more information about this city council or um, how you can watch... Uh, basically watch the videos that I'm about to show you in terms of um, creating a story out of a couple clips here and there and trying to kind of tell you what happened during the city council meetings and of course you can always log on to their City of Missoula's website ci.missoula.mt.us all you got to remember is City Missoula Montana United States mm -hmm. pretty simple you can always use the search engine and usually this thing pops up and you can go to this website and you can basically find all your meetings by going to Let's get, just get a little close up for you guys. So we zoom in nice and close. You go to your government, you go on down to agendas, webcasts, and minutes, and it brings you to this nice little page right here. And then you get a whole list of all the meetings and uh, upcoming agendas. And of course, if you just see agenda, that means that the meeting's upcoming. But of course, if your guys are, um, we're going to be talking. We're going to be switching gears, but of course, um, in the very first part of the meeting, they talked about uh, this little proclamation and suicide prevention week. And it, here is Mayor John Egan talking a little bit more about this proclamation. This proclamation recognizes suicide as a community-wide problem and suicide prevention as a community responsibility, and designates the week of September fifth, two thousand sixteen, as two. Uh, I'm sorry, as suicide prevention week. This week overlaps World Suicide Prevention Day on September 10th, recognized internationally and supported by the World Health Organization. Whereas, folks, Montana's suicide rate is double the national average and has ranked among the top five states with the highest rates of suicide for the last 35 years. And whereas in 2014 and 15, Missoula County suffered 68 suicides. And whereas suicide by firearm accounts for 51% of all suicides in the United States, 64% of all of the suicides in Montana 
and guns stored in the house are used for suicide 40 times more often than for self-protection. And whereas it is estimated that 5 million people in the United States are survivors of suicide, those who have lost loved ones to suicide, in Montana there are about 1,200 new survivors each year. And whereas our community should support suicide prevention efforts to the maximum extent possible with groups such as the Western Montana Suicide Prevention Initiative working to reduce the frequency of Missoula County suicide deaths and attempts, and the pain of survivors affected by the suicide of loved ones through educational programs, evidence-based policy, intervention services, and bereavement services. Now, therefore, I, John, John Engen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the State of Montana, do hereby proclaim the week of September 5th through 9th, 2016, in Missoula as Suicide Prevention Week. And All right. So, um, Suicide Prevention Week leads up to Su Suicide Prevention Day, which is International Suicide Prevention Day, which is on September 10th. So, uh, of course, they'll be kind of doing that next week. And uh, we have Susan Haypatrick from United Way. Um, she um, basically talks about the kind of events and kind of classes that we're going to be putting on. I believe it's going to be at uh, Missoula First Credit, Federal Credit Union, where they're going to be hosting this. And it's like a suicide class, you know, where you can learn how to deal with uh, people who are uh, maybe suicidal, maybe not. And it's actually the, uh, the she'll talk about a little bit more, but it's just about the classes, where and when they're going to be basically hosting it all day at the bank. Address. So this year, for Worldwide Suicide Prevention Week, we are involving our wonderful array of uh, arts and culture organizations. This is our logo, Heart Missoula. You'll see that the art in heart is... Um, uh, highlighted and the soul of Missoula. Um, we really want to uh, involve these organizations to shine a light of hope on the tragedy of suicide in our community, promote positive mental health, and reduce the stigma and shame related to suicide. You know, if we can't talk about things, we can't fix them. And again, this is a public health crisis in our community. So one of the most important events of Worldwide Suicide Prevention Week is all day Wednesday and Thursday, September 7 and 8th at Missoula Federal Credit Union. We are providing assist training co-sponsored by the credit union and IRS at the University of Montana. It is the most widely taught suicide prevention workshop in the world. It is suitable for everybody age 16 and older, regardless of prior experience, who wants to be able to provide suicide first aid. It is shown by major studies to significantly reduce suicide. All right, so of course, that's happening uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, two weeks. Um, that's two weeks from today, and it's gonna be at Missoula First Credit Union. Um, and you know you can pretty much go there anytime. And I do want to make mention this one note is that uh, Missoula is one of the only places to actually think of maybe instead of sending people out to these kinds of uh, classes, because which can actually run up to like uh, thousands and thousands of dollars just to learn how to prevent suicide and kind of thing. They instead of going to the place to learn about it, they actually paid for the instructor to come down here, and then that way they can get more people involved to do it. So that's one of the things that Missoula's done, and everyone's just like, huh, that's actually a good idea. Why don't we just bring the, the experts down here? It's only one expert rather than bringing a whole bunch of people to that classroom. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what uh, Missoula's doing with suicide prevention. Now we're going to switch gears. It's an, an, another big part of the median as well. Um, there's this one public comment, and I wanted to mention this because uh, last week uh, we had a couple of uh, public comments that were against Harlan Wells. But this one is more just like kind of like de escalating the situation, just be like, okay, guys, like he hasn't showed up at a couple meetings, but. We probably shouldn't like make him resign. So this is, um, let me just double check. This is Jay Cooper, and he doesn't agree with some of the uh, comments that were said about Harlem Wells last week. I'm just here because of the comments last week regarding Councilman Wells. I too agree that uh, they were unfounded. I don't think his call for resignation is a uh, legitimate call. Um, I'm okay with the work he's been doing. Granted, I would like to see a few more meetings attended, but I just want to say that I think the call for uh, for resignation is out of line. 
All right, so that's uh, that was his comment about that. Um, now we're going to move a little bit further ahead, and of course, one of the big things that were talked about during the uh, city council meeting was tourist homes. But just to let, let you guys know, this is they're talking about updating an ordinance so they can help regulate what it means to be a tourist home and what areas in Missoula actually can allow tourist homes and what places actually just do tourist home without actually because you're supposed to have a license for it to do that kind of stuff mm -hmm. to like rent out your house because it's like a renter's license commercial um, and because there's a difference between residency homes and then commercial homes which is kind of like what what tourist homes are kind of doing so imagine people renting their homes for vacationing folks it's exactly like timeshare but without the middleman timeshare and the headache you know timeshare is just ridiculous because you're designated at a time Okay, so this ordinance is about tourist homes, which is basically a uh, Airbnb without a single room, and it's basically an entire dwelling. So instead of saying like a home, like in a single room or something, you basically get the whole run of the house. I've done it before. I've stayed at a home up in Seattle that, you know, they rented their home. It's nice. You know, it's pretty cool. Uh, but of course, there are rules and regulations between rental homes and live-in homes. Some places in Missoula don't allow these rental um, tourist homes. Um, in residential areas. So that's one of the things they want to help clarify in this one as well. Of course, my understanding of this ordinance is basically liability issues. Let's say a group of young kids rent a home for the month and during the summer and party and it's like let the place kind of go to crap. Um, there's noise or noise complaints and of course they don't listen to other homeowners discussion because you know they were only renting the place they don't mm -hmm. actually have to listen to the neighbors and be like you know you probably should mow your lawn is like huh no and whatever um, so th that's one of the issues of liabilities of damages or potential things so what if that, an incident happens at a tourist home there is of course the owner is responsible for any kind of insurance mm -hmm. um, but there's always that issue of let's like oh let's say we invite some friends down that we just met in Missoula after renting this home and then they jump off the roof yeah this sounds very very complicated in the way that a lot of things could happen mm -hmm. and a lot of things like you know you could have renters that were total jerks and party and but, don't care uh, but then again you could have renters mm -hmm. that were totally fine so I understand that uh, neighbors would have this concern yep and this is Bob loops and when they open up the public hearing this is one of his concerns homes do condominiums any favor just because of their nature you have separate owners um, we're close together and um, we're a little community. So I'd like you to just consider those changes when you uh, consider the whole ordinance. Thank you, sir. All right. So that's just a little bit of concern about that. I'm going to skip ahead and go to the next part of the concerns, which is John Snively, and he's worried about the costs um, associated with the tourist homes. We'll actively remove long-term housing stock from the city and drive up the cost of the remaining stock. Um, also, I believe there are some quality of life issues that uh, need to be addressed uh, more completely than they are, and that is also part of the growth plan. So I think this, this fights against the growth plan quite a bit. Um, allowing occupancy of of uh, one person per 150 square feet, which I think is the latest proposal I saw online, seems excessive to me. I think uh, something north of 200 s square feet would, would make more sense uh, to prevent large groups of unruly guests, not always, but on occasion. And that would be one of the objections many people have had to these homes in the past in their experience. Um, well, the three strikes provision for complaints is good. It should require, not should require two-thirds majority in city council to revoke a license. Licenses are granted administratively through this proposed ordinance, as I understand it, and should be able to be revoked administratively as well. All right, so of course that was his um, uh, like his input of this ordinance and what they're gonna do with that one. Um, this last um, um, quote is from city appointee Helen Jenkins and she speaks on the misconceptions and the concerns about some of these tourist homes. So she speaks a little more, more on this. I commend Land Use Planning Committee for paring down the licensing requirements for tourist homes. Um, the fewer the barriers to entry for registration, the more people we're likely to get in the door. Um, with that said, I have two main concerns with the proposed ordinance um, presented above. So 
the first one is this. The best available studies for creating a tourist home ordinance, which has been done in you know, San Francisco and other big cities and spent a lot of money trying to figure this out, um, is that it's really important to differentiate between the primary use of a tourist home and the occasional use of a tourist home. Uh, Mr. Savitz pointed out, out earlier that really an occasional use tourist home is somebody that lives in their home for 270 days a year, and a primary use tourist home is somebody that rents out their uh, rents out the place 95 days a year. Right, so it's a major difference in scale. Uh, differentiating between these two uses helps to illustrate the biggest liability to the city. That is, conversion of homes from long-term rentals to short-term rentals. Occasional use does not threaten this because it's already someone's primary residence. Primary use, however, does threaten conversion. Usually it's more profitable, as others have noted, uh, to have a, a short-term rental rather than a long-term rental. And given the shortage of housing in Missoula, it seems unwise to ignore this important difference in use. By keeping the primary use and occasional use definitions in the ordinance, development services can begin to collect more accurate data about tourist homes in Missoula and how they may or may not impact neighborhoods. All right, so of course, uh, she wants to help regulate it. it she, that's basically what she wants to do. That, again, that was Helen Jenkins. You can see her whole entire comment by logging on to this nice little wonderful page and you just have to click on the uh, agenda item make sure that the meeting actually happened before and then the video will be available for you guys to watch at any time and you could of course you can click on the hyperlinks on any of those videos to do this and that um, so um, yeah that's pretty much it of course John Debari is the one who's spearheading this thing and um, he's uh, he kind of responded to some of the concerns but uh, I think a lot of the concerns is uh, try to like regulate this and try to like have a clear concise thing because there's some homes that just have a primary rental mm -hmm. rental stuff because you know you know some homes that uh, just rent homes mm -hmm. you know they, people yeah. don't buy homes people just like rent homes and a lot of times like the owners of the homes are just like oh we'll keep the homes because we really can't sell it we might as well just turn into a rental yep. blah 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 but tourist homes are a little more different because sometimes some people have like a summer lake house and they like to stay on the lake during the summer and then their homes just like you know we can make money just leasing it out to people mm -hmm. rather than just paying some um, uh, person just to, like house it mm -hmm. so yeah, that's um, so that's why kind of like tourist homes it's it's it's, it's, it's an interesting thing and what this ordinance is going to hopefully do which is going back to land use and planning mind you they didn't approve it this is just a public hearing just kind of talk about concerns mm -hmm. and they want to uh, I guess it's all about like how much uh, you know like w when people start selling their homes what kind of like area it is it's, it's gonna be a resident home is there gonna be like a like a lot of like uh, people like transitioning in and out of the homes it really depends. It really does. Renters yeah. are very different uh, class of people than yeah. people who own their own home. Own home because if mm -hmm. you're renting a home, you basically rely a lot on the homeowner to deal with anything that breaks, anything that any kind of problems, kind of like a, a an invisible hand that mm -hmm. uh, help basically fixes everything. Then, and on the other hand, the uh, the owner of the home has to deal with all the liability that happens. So there's always uh, kind of like there's a, there's a trust system involved with these tourist homes, and it's like you're trusting a bunch of random strangers to stay in your home and make sure that nothing gets like too crazy. It's true. Yeah, it's very difficult. But uh, I I don't know if I'd feel comfortable doing that. I don't know if I like personally as a homeowner would feel comfortable renting my home to someone I don't know. Well, there's there's a lot of. Um, people who own more than one home. It's true, I don't. Especially like in Missoula, a lot of uh, a lot of owners like who own homes like in bigger cities kind of like sell their home for like mm -hmm. pennies, like dollars on the penny basically because they make a lot of money from there. They buy a home here and they basically can mm -hmm. live off of like $500,000. So their home was like a million dollars in like Texas or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they buy a home that's uh, maybe like 280,000. That means they have a surplus of X amount of money. Mm -hmm. It's very true. And they just live off of it. A lot of them just kind of chill and just like, chill. I love Missoula, man. Bad. It's like, you don't work here. You just yeah. kind of chill. Yeah. Start yeah. up something. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's definitely a lot of the, a lot of uh, people who are moving to Missoula who have that situation yeah. because the housing market in Missoula is actually really good. But that's that's more on this and that because I, I took home base, the little lesson there. And of course, you know, interest rates are really good for buying homes. Good. Um, you know, it's your money, if you're renting like me, it's like it kind of feels like you're wasting your money just throwing money mm -hmm. away into the garbage of nothingness, which is what renting is. But home ownership is still another issue because, you know, if your fridge breaks, you, you you know you you have to pay, pay for you yourself. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So yeah, yeah DIY of homeownership and mm -hmm. uh, basically the 
invisible hand of helpfulness if you're a renter. So yeah. it's all, uh, but of course, c coming back to tourist homes, we're going to be talking about it today um, in the land use and planning meeting. I believe that happens either in the afternoon or sometime, because uh, I know in the morning they do like either parks and conservation or this and yes. that. Cause they have a whole bunch of meetings today. Mm -hmm. It all starts at 10 and it goes until 5 p.m. Of course, there's that break at noon. So if you want to, more information, you can go onto the City of Missoula's website by going to www.ci.missoula.mt.us. And you have this nice little page to show it all. But of course, um, I want to bring it back and less about boring stuff and more about a little fun game I like to yeah. call Hallmark or <laughs> Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, was the anticipation worth it? Yes, it All right. really was. <laughs> uh, then I'll do it more often. And it's like, I'll just say, like, at the beginning of the show next week, it'll just be Hallmark. And then at the end of the show, yeah. Bullmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you guys don't know how this game works, which I've explained it many times, but I always like to explain it because it's fun. It's where uh, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys at home have to determine whether or not it's a real Hallmark original movie or it's complete Bullmark. Yeah? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Let's play. Yeah. <laughs> summertime is a time for fun in the sun, but for Ryan Lee, her summer, her sunny weather is getting the storm of the century, or should I say storms. <laughs> With Hurricane Henry and Ivan disrupting her beach time, she begins to wonder if she'll ever be, a ever be able to hit the beach from inside a local school's gymnasium. Parker, the hunky teacher at the school, must look after his students after hours when the hurricane hits. Ryan runs into Parker in the school, and as sparks fly, sometimes the sun shines in all kinds of places. <laughs> and the movie's called When the Sun Shines. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> is this a uh, Hallmark original movie, or is this Bullmark? I don't know. This is I'm going to say Bullmark. You're going to say Bullmark? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go either way. I'm going to agree with ASAP. I'm going to say Bullmark, too. Are you sure? Yeah, you did Hallmark last time. So? And like I said, like Hallmark Maybe is I'm like trying a cornucopia. To, okay. We're trying to pay attention. We're trying to pay attention. Well, you guys, I feel sorry for you. Well, well, not as much as I feel sorry for me because you guys got it right. It yeah. is Hallmark. Good job, Lisa. <laughs> All right, you guys, ready to play round two of Hallmark or Bullmark. And yeah. if you at home are playing, it is a nice little... Uh, Break away from our regular scheduled programming. Um, actually, we've done this so much, basically, is regular scheduled programming. <laughs> yeah, so, continuing on our regu regularly scheduled program, uh, <laughs> Baxter Anderson is a wealthy city slicker who's never been out of the city, but when one of his properties in Colorado are being used as public land, he flies on down to protect his assets. <laughs> when he gets there, it's Baxter versus the town of Coldridge, a small town with a strong sense of community. As Baxter begins to spend time with some of the locals, he begins to see that some things are better with the right company. Oh. Yep. So it's called Unexpected Vacation. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, ooh. How many times are you gonna make this movie? I know, they've made it already. <laughs> Hilary Swank <laughs> goes into the ghetto and tries to save the school from failing. <laughs> Can she do it? It's like, they've already done it. Okay, they've already relax. done it. And, like, and she raps too. It's like, is she rapping really too? That's like. Okay, I'm gonna say Hallmark. Uh, yeah, me too. You say Hallmark? Yeah. Okay. You guys are just. Are we two for two? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, you're wrong because oh. it is a bull mark. Oh. oh. Yeah, sorry. I, sorry, I didn't mean to get you. <laughs> I guess, God. I was so excited. I was like disappointed because I was just like, because I was trying to fool you guys into yeah. thinking, but it's a, it's completely bull mark. So Man. thanks for playing. This is a double dose of bull mark this yeah. week. And like, I didn't want to look for a Hallmark movie. I just want to say, okay, let's just write my own stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, next uh, Monday, I'll have another Tales from the Weekend. And I uh, completed all the Boys and Girls um, Club videos. Oh. Good. So I'll have a boys and girls, um, boys and girls club of Missoula County, and then our for you guys. Our Saturday drop-ins start in about three weeks. Yeah, it's so we uh, got we had not this weekend. Two weeks from not, this weekend. Not next weekend. Uh, the weekend after that, because yeah, this weekend is is this weekend Roots Fest. Next weekend is Labor Day weekend. Yep. And then the weekend after that, we start it. Yep. So, so two weeks. weeks. Two, two weeks from this Saturday. Yeah, two weeks from this Saturday, our Saturday drop-ins start. 17 days. Yeah, 
So we'll yes. be having videos from that, and you guys can bring your kiddos by on Saturday from one to five uh, for only 10 bucks, or from one to three or three to five for only five. But I do want to uh, mention um, Beth Woody's uh, website once again. Oh, uh, yes. It's, it's the Ovando Grand Fondo, and you can sign up here. It's a nice little fundraiser, and you get to do some back mountain bike trails, um, which is originally owned by a lot of property owners, which are opening their land up for this nice little bike race for people who want to support the Missoula Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm. and it's great and it's uh, so they can provide free events for summer concerts and stuff but of course during the fall season they usually have to pay but it's usually fairly reasonable um, there's a lot of people who support the symphony orchestra and you can too which happens on September 10th um, around uh, gotta be there at 7 a.m. they are in Ovando at 8 a.m. and uh, you have to do re you have to register well how far is Ovando only uh, 20 mi 30 miles okay so you'd have to wake up six 5, six? 30, 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. drive on down there with your bike. Uh, unless you're going to bike there, then you have to wake up like 4 in the morning I did to look bike up, on down I there. I did look up the population of Ovando before our show, and there are 81 people living in Ovando. But it's up from, from two, in 2000, there were 71 people, and then in 2010, there were 81 people. Yeah. Like, wow, that's like one of the small towns in Montana whose population has actually increased. Yeah. All these small towns, their population decreased. Well, the one small town that's definitely increased in is Bonner. Especially when they have that new factory and they're hired over 300 people and they're growing. Mm -hmm. So Bonner is definitely one of those up and coming small towns that everyone thought was like, oh, you know, without the lumber mill and all that stuff. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, a bunch of brand new businesses are popping up there. So Good. Bonner is the best place to go if you guys are looking for a job. Awesome. Yep. Manufacturing, awesome. learning how to manufacture jobs. So I don't know, that's just cool. giving them a plug. It's uh, Alcon. Yep. Very cool. But anyways, if you want to find out more information about us, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made your red out twice, and I'm also really cheap to actually buy the rights to wakeupmissoula.com. Um, <laughs> you can go to uh, Facebook. You can go to Twitter at wakeupmissoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. Check us out at MCAT TV Missoula. And you can like us on Facebook. And for more information, we've got a website, MCAT.org. But for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's Asaph Adonai, and we'll see you guys Friday.